Okay, so this is probably going to be a bit of a choppy video because I'm going to be doing a bit over several days. Today I'm not really doing anything more than setting up the job, but there's the first one. At least to this stage, it still needs to be milled, sides cleaned up in the mill, but the gland is tapped. I don't know if you can quite see it. Probably not, but there's a, a little spot in the pocket for the um, o-ring to sit in, and then the thread of the for the gland nut is slightly smaller, slightly larger rather than the um, than the o-ring pocket, so that the o-ring can go in there without catching on the thread and tearing itself to pieces which is very much what I want to do. So, what I have first up is the second one. Now the hole obviously doesn't go right the way through, so the first thing to do will be to chop that off, which I will do once I get it basically in the chuck. Yeah, so I'll get it mounted, chop that off, and then I'll use the hole in the middle, um, get a DT on it, DTI on it, and um, set it up to be as true as possible. Here's something I made. One of the first things I made for this lathe, aside from the carriage stop, bit of square bar with a hole in it, and um, just an M5 bolt stuffed in the top. And this mounts to the tool holder. And what it lets me do is it lets me mount a DTI at centre height easily. probably cut in with a, um, a graphic on the screen right about now. Um, so what I've got here is one of these will be where the slide bar rests. There you go, there's the cross head with the slide bar on it. So that there is to hold the slide bar in place. So I need to get the dimension from the centre of the hole to bottom of the slide bar but that's going to actually be finished off in the mill so what I've done is a little bit of um, a little bit of maths to work out how wide that needs to be which is 10 mil and then from the center to there which is 14.25 as I recall it'll be written on the thing on the screen at the moment and from there I could then go 14.255 I've got a triangle so I can work out the length of the hypotenuse which gives me the radius of 30 uh, radius of 15.1 and 30.2 diameter and that'll trim me right back down as far as I can go and then the rest can come off on the mill to get it nice and square.
should only be a tiny amount to come off now. 0.1 is what I want to take off. 30.3, let's just... So... Not much at all. To be fair, I could leave it like that, but... job you might as well at least try to do it right very slow feed try and get a good finish back after they've taken the cut and end up with a spiral on it. And I mean I guess that's okay. Everyone works their own way but to me that would just annoy me to death if I tried it. So I don't. 30.2. So I've finished that. I've done that. You haven't actually missed anything. So yay. Um, next thing is open that out a bit um, to going to put a ten and a half mil drill through it and then the rest will be done with the boring part that needs to be 15 mil deep so ta-da <laughs> There's a universal truth that no matter where you put the camera it's always right in the way so here we go yeah, that speed should be pretty good. when there's vibration. Reduce the speed, increase the feed. So, let's see how we go. Yeah, lovely.
you need to get in there with a the boring bar. This boring bar is old and it's tiny. Um, seriously, it's almost as old as I am. <laughs> Maybe not. But it's been ground and reground and reground and reground from a bit of um, six mil. Actually, it's probably a quarter inch um, high speed steel. And honestly, I've been using it since I was little. I was little. Exact same bar. How's the angle? Should do us nicely. So, what we want to do is find the outside, which is right there, and set the stop seat. need to take about a millimeter off which works for me nicely what I want which for this case a little long is just fine so now I need to get in there and it's got to be 15 mil deep so I'm simply going to wind leave the stop it as, as it is Wind the compion slide along by 15mm, which is 15 turns, which is always handy. 
um, and that way everything's already set right. Very, very fractionally, like 0.01 of a mil over, if anything, which suits my tolerances at least. Let's see, what does it look like down there? It looks nice. Okay. So, piston rod with small o ring and the tail socks, the Everything's getting in the way of everything else. But that should be a nice squish fit. Just like that. Now from there I want to bring the um, bring the tool back another two and a half mil and that'll clear my O-ring pocket. Um, it's a 1.6 mil o-ring, um, so 2.5 just gives it a little space so that the o-ring can roll as the piston rod slides through it, which helps with the um, stop the um, o-ring from being torn to shreds or just you know wearing a flat on the o-ring. 2.5. Now, I need to take another quarter mil out.
probably out by about 0.01 if anything. Um, too big, which is fine for my purposes. So, get everything out of the way so we can tap it all. I'm going the wrong way again, aren't I? I am. So all I'm doing is the tap is in the chuck, the chuck's in the tailstock and the tailstock's loose on the bed. So that as I thread it will just pull it in and I will do it manually because I'm not going to do it under power. Not with, a, my, loose, not with my loose chuck trick anyway. Um, loose tailstock rather. So I've got a mark. I think it shows up on the camera. Uh, look at that, it's underneath the... there, see the mark? Hopefully, well that tells me how far in I can go before I hit something I shouldn't be tapping, which is half a mil smaller anyway, so it shouldn't tap, but you just never really know. Now, the tail stock is going to be constantly trying to twist. The chuck, rather. Why do I keep mixing chuck and tail stock tonight? Uh, it's one of those days. Now the thing with tapping is that the forces of the, of the tap are trying to pull the chuck out of the morse taper and that's why it keeps spinning. Whereas if I was drilling, the forces would be trying to push it in. Someone will probably argue and say, no, it's the same, but yeah, trust me, that's what's happening. Turn around a bit so I can see my mark. And if I didn't mention it before, this is half inch BSB, British Standard Brass, which is a 26 TPI thread. It's quite fine and it's chosen partially because it's on the plan which is always a good reason but also because the tapping drill is slightly larger than the um, seat for the o-ring so the o-ring can pass through without tearing itself apart on the um, on the thread um, which is only a problem when it's actually going in and coming out I suppose though if it's coming out it's probably getting replaced it isn't really an issue um, why are you slipping in the chuck so yeah the chuck keys just so that I can grip onto the um, grip onto the chuck think of it as a cheap tap holder
this point, I will give you all a really good tip. Before you take anything out of the chuck, be absolutely certain that you want to take it out of the chuck. There is nothing worse than taking it out and then having to do, realising you've got one more operation to do, because you're never going to get it to run as true the second time. Ever. Doesn't matter how good you are with a dial test indicator, doesn't matter how awesome your three jaw chuck is, it simply will not happen. So, there's one, there's two. Yep. Threaded, board, no ring pocket, we're good. Yeah, piston rod. one of those nights grabbing the wrong chuck key there we go so you can see around the edge there that bit where I couldn't get up close I will mount it onto a um, I'll mount the whole thing onto that bit of rust on my freshly machined no I think that's that low spot that I decided was fine okay um, yeah I'll put on a mandrel and just take that bit off 